GPS surveying for beginners. Most likely you have seen a handsome guy like me using this kind of equipment, maybe somewhere on the road, maybe somewhere else. If you are wondering what this handsome guy is doing with this equipment, he is actually land surveying. And I'm going to explain to you in an easy and simple way about GPS surveying. So let's get in the theory of GPS surveying. So let's say this is the earth. Then there can be a land surveyor with a GPS surveying it. And around the world there are satellites. And those satellites send signals to the earth. And every time the satellite sends a signal of its position and the time of when the satellite signal gets sent. So the signal travels from a satellite to the GNS receiver. And the GNS receiver can determine the difference in time between when the satellite signal left the satellite and the time that the GNS receiver received the satellite signal. So the difference in time is known. Then if the speed of the satellite signal is also known, then you can determine the distance from the satellite to the GNS receiver. If the GNS receiver then receives satellite signals from four or more satellites, then it can determine a position in X, Y and Z. So, what do you need for GPS surveying? My equipment. First of all, in this case, I have an Amlet Reach RS2. The receiver. We need, of course, the rod. It's a carbon rod. A tablet holder. In my case, in this system, I have our rugged tablet, the Avlos Armor an Android, and of course, the Apple Survey Wizard, the surveying software. This combined, you can start surveying for yourself. There's the satellite signal. We have a satellite there, and we have a satellite there, and there, and there. But before the signal comes from the satellite all the way up to my GNS receiver, it has a lot of obstacles. For example, those white things in the sky, the clouds, is an obstacle. And when it reaches a little bit further here, we have trees, trees. We have buildings like our castle on the background. We have uh, maybe uh, 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 electrical fences, electrical lines. So anything that's an obstacle, obstacles. Once it reaches the, uh, uh, in this case, the eminent reach RS2, <coughs> then we have a signal. And before I want to mention that, the first signal from the the lowest satellite comes from 20,200 kilometers. So it needs to travel a long, long distance before it reaches my GNS receiver. So there's another obstacle. As you can see, I hold it like this. And once I think, okay, maybe I have a signal now, my head is blocking also the signal. And of course, how can I solve that? Is attaching this carbon rod. And I also have the bottom part. Screw it together. Now it's a little bit heavy at the moment <laughs> because I disconnected it. Uh, screwing it on top. I'm not so handy today, but yes, once I finished, the receiver is above my head. As Raymond told, there are lots of things that give inaccuracies in GPS surveying, but there is a solution. You can have centimeter accuracy with GPS surveying and for that you need corrections. Let's see how that works. The main inaccuracy uh, in GPS surveying is because of the atmosphere. The speed of the satellite signal is not everywhere from the satellite to the GNS receiver the same. So how we can correct this? That can be with a base station 
and a base station is nothing more than a DNS receiver that is stationary on the same spot. It continuously receives the satellite signals. from all the satellites that it can receive and because of the location of the base station being known and being always the same it can determine the exact position and the deviation of the satellite signals with that deviation it can determine the error and it can correct that error. So those corrections that are determined in the base station will be sent from the base station to the DNS receiver. This can be done by radio or by NTRIP. When you get those corrections of a base station, then with a DNS receiver you can GPS survey with centimeter accuracy. And you need corrections. Why? Because without corrections you get a deviation of a meter, two meters, three meters, five meters. And that's not what we want, because we want centimeter accuracy. Let's focus on the GNS receiver now. The Amlet Reach RS2 in this case. How does it work and what's actually inside? Let me explain a little bit on actually what is inside. The signals received by the antenna has been sent to the RTK module and the RTK module determines by the signal sent from the antenna and calculates the position. From the RTK module it sends through Bluetooth a signal to the tablet, to the software. But it also needs something else, power. So there's an internal battery inside. We also need land surveying software, our AppLoss survey wizard. So what does this software need to do actually? First of all, we need to determine a coordinate system. Sending from the Mnet Reach RS2, we just get a longitude, latitude and altitude position. But what we actually want is an X, Y and Z. There comes the software. There are many pre-programmed coordinate systems over 2200 plus worldwide so definitely your country will be there then after that what does the software need to do you need to know how to survey or how to stake out those are the two main things the software needs to do but you can also calculate you can also draw further the software needs to connect to the GNS receiver if you don't do that, it uses the GPS from the tablet itself, which of course is incorrect. This is how you do GPS surveying. If you want to know more on how to survey your fence, please click on the video left or right of me.